You know, I find it interesting, Phil Rosenthal, that you're such a foodie and you love food and you love uh, eating and you obviously have uh, just a, a delight to talk to and be Thank around. You. Why, why, why did Larry David not want to have lunch with you and curb your enthusiasm? I don't <laughs> understand what that's about. Because we have the opposite about. personality. Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm annoying. <laughs> to someone like him, so up, excited, let's go. Yeah. Leave me alone. What are you bothering me? <laughs> Right, that makes sense. Like I can't, I'd be his friend in one minute. Why? Because he's hysterical. I want to, you know, laugh. Yeah. Yes. He doesn't have friends like that. Where, <laughs> like, you want to go have lunch? He would say, "What's the point?" I was at a party with him once. By the way, everything out of his mouth. Yes. Is an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. No question about I it. I met him. Have you met him? I have. Has he been here? He has been sitting in that chair multiple times. Okay, so. He doesn't like being here. <laughs> <laughs> he says he does, though, Phil. He says nah, he, he doesn't. <laughs> Trust me. He's not a people person. He can be pleasant. He can turn it on for you. Okay. But yeah. trust me, when he got on, he goes, oh, I have to do the thing. <laughs> yeah. I meet him at a party. Yes. This is like 15, 20 years oh, ago. Yeah. I meet him at a party. Yes. First words out of his mouth. I say, hello, it's so nice to meet you. He goes, not hello. You think it's all right to throw gum in the fireplace? <laughs> That's what he says I'm to I'm like, you. That's an episode right there. Put that, right? Did he throw the gum in the fireplace? Of course he did. <laughs> and then he worried about it. That is an episode of Curb. Absolutely. So how did you come? Did he bounce that idea off you? Like you, you come on the show and we, we, we try to have you try to have lunch with me, and then I show up wearing, Absolutely. A, wearing a MAGA hat to get That's out right. of it? That's right. I thought the MAGA hat, I thought that would be dated. You right. know, maybe you don't do that bit because... Right. Who knows? Three Who knows? months from now, oh the show's gosh. not going to be on for almost a year. That'll be dated. Right. Yeah, sadly, it wasn't. <laughs> no, nope. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How did you meet Ray Romano? When did you ever cross paths with him? Uh, they, no. We were set up kind of on a blind date. I had seen the Letterman show that he had done. He'd been trying to get into uh, on the Letterman show for like 12 years as a comedian. Right. And from his one six-minute appearance on that show, mm -hmm. Letterman said there should be a sitcom for this guy. Letterman had a production company at set up at CBS to, pants, right? to do stuff. Uh -huh. And so they set about looking for people to create a show for this Ray Romano fellow. Right. So when I got the video cassette in 1996 of, of his appearance, I said, yes. oh, I saw that mm -hmm. when it was on. Sure, I'll take that meeting. And we met for lunch. And we kind of hit it off for every story he had about his crazy Italian family. Yeah. I had one about my Fakak, the Jewish family. Right. And we just, you know, that was it. So it was a lunch. A lunch. Where you met and then you at mapped Art's out. At Art's Deli. And at Art's Deli. Art's where, Deli. Where every, uh, every. Every sandwich is a work of art. It's a work of art. That's I've heard saying. about yes. that. Yes. And so <laughs> so you, you mapped out um, what everybody loves Raymond would look like. Is that what it. We had no idea what the show would be. But if you and I met for the first time. Yes. And we were going to work on a project. I'd just say, tell me about yourself. Just getting to know you if we had lunch. Right. Where are you from? What's your family like? And he starts telling me, I got. Uh, twin boys and an older daughter and I got my parents <laughs> lived close by and they was bothering me and I got my older brothers always jealous of me he saw my award for comedy he said never ends for Raymond everybody loves Raymond and I said well it doesn't seem like there's anything there we can use <laughs> except all of that except and all the of title it. and what I didn't know about the characters their personalities yes. I filled in with my family is that so who who from your family did you bring to the equation pretty much the parents a uh -huh. little bit of me mm -hmm. in him because I don't even know him very well. A little bit of my wife. Yeah, uh -huh. stuff. All the stories. 90% of every single thing you saw on that show over nine years yes. happened to me or to Ray or to one of the other writers. If you were for me, yes. your job was to go home, get in a fight with your wife, come back in and tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a show. That's the show. That's a show. It's kind of the way, you know, I have to say... The way Larry goes through life and says, yeah. you think it's all right to throw gum in the fireplace and then sees if he can get a show out of that. Right. That's right? a whole so idea. So his observations, whereas mine is character, personality, relationships more. How did you cast it? How did. How oh, did... my God. So many stories. I okay. wrote a book about it. It's yes. called. Uh, not. I'm not here to sell books. Please. Except for the, yes. somebody feed Phil the book, See, which is coming. Right. You can pre-order that now. But I wrote a book right after Raymond was over called You're Lucky You're Funny, How mm -hmm. Life Becomes mm -hmm. a Sitcom. Yes. So it's about how you can take what's crappy in your life and maybe turn it into something good, like right. a sitcom that runs nine years. Yeah, like a, and, and is generationally brilliant. So uh, what's your favorite story of casting it then? Obviously, you've got Brad Garrett, you have Peter Boyle, you have the whole so, rest so, of the crew. So, I, so think, I think the best was we looked for the mom. Mm -hmm. It was... Very specific. 
I was writing my mom, and there was a key scene in the pilot mm-hmm. about how I gave my parents the Fruit of the Month Club for for <laughs> a holiday gift. Yes. And I got this phone call. Philip, what did you do? Uh, there's, there's over a dozen pears here. How am I going to eat all these pears? And I said, well, give some to dad. He, yeah, yeah. How much fruit can your father eat? Please do me a favor. Don't us, don't ever send us any more food again. I said, well, there's another box is coming next month. She said, what more pears? And I said, no, a different box every month. She got, every month. Oh my God, Max, you got us in some kind of cult. <laughs> I can't talk anymore. There's too much fruit in the house. She was hysterical. <laughs> so I thought, oh let's God. put it in the pilot. This will be a good demonstration of how yeah. crazy Ray's parents are, yes. right? Yes. And we had the women audition with that scene. Mm-hmm. And in comes Doris Roberts, mm-hmm. who was just, there was no one who got it like that. Mm-hmm. Because right away I recognized my mother. Mm-hmm. That's it. Boom. When you write very specifically, Yes. When you talk specifically, you sure you found this in your years of doing this. Yes. The more specific you get about details, the more universal it becomes. That's how people's minds work. We all have specifics. So even if yours isn't mine, mm-hmm. if you were to start talking about a play in sports that you love, I don't know anything about sports. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at this like you, mm-hmm. but I'd relate to it because I get the obsession. I'm obsessed about something else. Yes, you are. So we understand the feeling of it. That's fascinating. It becomes relatable. I've never heard that before. Yeah. And so Doris Roberts says that that's my mom and she's hired. Had specifics. Boom. Yes. That's amazing. And she was, you know, she won three Emmys for the role. Yeah. Spectacular. Spectacular is right. She was amazing. 